Hello and welcome! Now last time I fitted a fan to the uh, Furia, almost said to the Furious, <laughs> um, but the, fan, the original fan was freaking Furious because it was like too loud. But this time what I'm going to do is install this kickstart drum switcher into this Amiga 600. PCBWay have now become a one-stop solution. Other than doing high-quality PCB boards, they now do CNC services as well as 3D printing. If, like myself, you're into doing electronics projects and require PCBs, then do check out their services on their website. So, let's begin. So first things first, let's take this apart. It's already unscrewed. I don't know, are you one of these people who were, um, their Amiga is always unscrewed? <laughs> I seem to like be that person <laughs> who never like closes her amigas up. Well, not all of them, but like some of them. Um, yeah. So yeah, that's the fun thing we did last time. Let's remove this first. Notice that uh, the arrow is here, so that means miss the pin here and install there. And yes, I've got the fancy um, IC extractor. And that's because I've had the freaking cheap old ones and the, these things here just keep bending, you know, over time and I just got fed up of that. Now, if you watched the uh, last video about the fan last week, you'll notice that the fan is in a different direction. Now, this is following the advice of one gentleman in the comments who respectfully said to me that if I have the fan too close, the actual fan physically too close to the heatsink, um, it will be a little louder, so you know, just to try and you know, give it a go, to try and uh, turn it around just to see if it gets any quieter. And you know, I get that actually, I should have thought of that myself, but you know, thank you, sir, for steering me in the right direction. The other comments about the fan, however, were just a bit of I'm sorry, but I don't respond to people who are condescending towards me and <laughs> like treating me as if I know nothing. So yeah, I chose to ignore. Gotta be careful here because there's pins here <laughs> and I don't want them to short on that board. Okay, what to do here? I need to be careful here. So let's get some insulation. Let me actually, let me just try and insert it and see what the, uh... as you can see here, there is just enough clearance and there is no like um, pads or points touching each other or well, close to touching each other or anything like that. However, the boards are very close. So what I'm going to do just for a little bit of safety, I'm going to put the put some electrical tape on the board just to kind of have some insulation point just in case it gets pressed down. Uh, so yeah, let me get that just one moment. Oh, it's over there. I like it when things fall into place that easy. <laughs> You know, you just look, turn your head and it's like, oh, here I am. <laughs> it doesn't normally work that way for me. Yeah, as I was saying about this fan direction, you know, people going absolutely ape crap over fan direction. It's not just like um, the people in who commented last time. I've seen this in the tech community a lot. People go absolutely passionate about fan direction. And I'm just like, dude, it's a freaking fan. You know, it, either pull or push depends on where you put it. And yeah, there's one guy in the comments who, who the same guy, who was saying, oh, the reason why the fan speed, it takes a while to speed up is due to silicone um, heating up and, and that's how it, that's how silicone works. No, actually it's not. <laughs> it's not, if silicone took that long to warm up, then silicone electronics would be extremely inefficient. It's really like thick <laughs> reasoning. I'm sorry, but it is uh, to say that. Especially since I actually connected this to the USB adapter that came with it and it came on instantly without without speeding up. You know, it's not the doing silicone. But anyway, comments like that, any comments that are like condescending to, you know, I just will not reply. Anyone who's trying to over explain or explain things that I didn't even ask about, you know, and assuming that I know nothing. It's like, it's annoying. And I'm not gonna like comment, I'm just gonna ignore because life's too short to dwell on it. Right, anyway, this wrong switcher, it's, um, 
I got this ages ago. I'm talking like 2016-ish. It's a project by the same dude who does the flash floppy um, for the GoTech uh, care phrase. I don't know how to say his name. Now, if you do a search on it, Kickstart Switcher version 2, you'll find it somewhere. You know, it, it'll come up. Anyway, this thing here, you connect it to a point on the motherboard. Hello. What's that? So this cable here, actually this one, it does have a sounder and that indicates, it beeps to indicate when you have switched. This thing here, right? Uh, you connect it to either, on different Amigas, you connect it to different points on the motherboard, right? So on this one, uh, on the Amiga 600, you either connect it to the first pin of the IDE or there's a resistor around Neopolar, right? The sound chip. Pushy cat. <laughs> right, so pin one is, I believe, the one underneath here. There we go. So I can hook it onto that pin there, onto that contact. It's freaking underneath. <laughs> Yeah, that's not safe at all. Oh, no, wait, hold on, is it? No, that's not safe at all. You could very easily short that. So, rather than solder it onto the board and risk damaging, I can solder it onto the back of this um, board here. Keep this set just in case I shift this um, uh, this ROM switcher from another machine. Sorry, to another machine, and I need this again. I can just resolder it into that. There we go. Done. Again with the keyboard. The keyboard at the back is metallic, therefore conductive. I know it's not going to probably, most likely not going to touch that, but I just, the tape underneath and the top is literally just for, to ease my paranoia. <laughs> so how you change the kickstart is you keep and hold reset. Let's, let's take it through them. There's a few ROMs on here, so. Okay, so that's the first one, first beep. And that's gonna be 1.2. No, 2.0. I know this specific ones. Okay, so that's two, two, two beeps. So the second arm. Which doesn't seem to work or doesn't seem to like it. Maybe it's because of the furia. I don't know. I, I guess that's um, 1.2. So that's the third one. 1.3, it's the fourth one. Three point one. Okay. So this four, but the one point two doesn't seem to work. I'll just keep it like this. Because it's it's blowing air into the heat sink. My thought Last time was it sucks the air from the heatsink, you know, I mean, it, the airflow goes from into the side and then up through the top, as in like through there. But this way, it's just going into the vents and out the thing. So either way, it's moving air along that heatsink and cooling it. So honestly, I don't get this huge argument between uh, pull fans on push fans. I mean, people get aggressive over this. Is life, is it really worth it? You know, is, is life that dull? That you have to get aggressive over freaking fan direction. <laughs> There's plenty of other things and injustices going on in the world to get aggressive over and you can just choose freaking fans. <laughs> it's just thick. I don't understand people sometimes, honestly. 
ROM switcher may not be permanently in this um, A600. Uh, it may do, who knows. Just depends what I'm doing with future Amigas. I might get something else for this, another ROM switcher. Uh, maybe a different configuration, who knows. But for now, I'm happy with this because, you know, I've got 1.3, I've got 2.0, and I've got 3.1. Yeah, and that's... Hey, look, one more. <laughs> I'm not gonna, as I said, I explained in the last um, video that I'm not gonna put 3.2 on this because I don't want every Amiga I have to be upgraded to the brink of what it can do. No, be 3.1. That should load the hard drive as well. Yep, good, so it works. Um, yeah, if you've got something in there, just that's like a board in there like that, you can just simply solder it to pin one. If you have this, that is. I don't think this is around. I don't think this is a thing that you can just buy, this Kickstarter ROM switcher. I'm sure this other is around, but um, this is just a uh, thingy, what do you call it? I think it was just like a personal project. I'm gonna, have, I'm gonna have to look at other kickstart switchers for this, or for the Amiga 500, one of them, um, because they just come in useful. So now this next stage with this Amiga is to install 3.1 under this, <laughs> but I'm gonna, I'm not gonna do that today. Uh, I'm gonna keep it short for now. I just wanted to like install the Kickstarter on uh, Kickstart RAM on this. Um, I have other projects going on simultaneously. Also, for those of you who do not know, my website is up. Yay! <laughs> and um, it's gonna be my main go-to, yeah? It's it's up, it's looking great. Thank you so much, Rich. I've, I've designed the thing, but he's put the coding and everything in there because that's his speciality. Commenting on my posts. Thank you so much for those of you who already have commented. If you wanna leave a comment, please feel free to do so if you wanna comment on. I like the little chit chat thing, you know, that goes on with some of you, you know, it's, it's really like, you know, like the friendly neighbor, you know, you're talking to you over the fence and it's really nice. It just feels like that to me. So thank you so much. You know, those of you who do interact with me and those of you who share my stuff and I'm gonna put a new section on there very soon. So do keep a lookout for that because I'm starting to do more. Uh, I've got lots of things to do. I've got lots of things I'm starting to enjoy doing. So yeah, I've got no room for <laughs> arguing about fun direction. <laughs> so thanks so much for your likes, your shares. Do leave your thoughts in the comments below. Don't forget to check out my other videos and do subscribe for more. Also, I do more than create videos, so for more content, don't forget to check out my website as it contains all what I do. I update my blog fairly regularly, by the way. I am very happy with how I've designed my website and wish to thank Rich Garbutt for all the hard work and effort he's put into making it all work. Also, a big thank you goes to my top chair patrons. Rich Garbett, Axel Dominator, Electronskip UK, Aaron Metkov, Corey Ostman, Starglider77, Mark Bosak, Starlight Minako, Chris Sablansky, and Veronica Explains. No matter what, the Patreon tier. Each of you who choose to support me, genuinely, out of the goodness of your heart, deserves appreciation. Hence, the least I can do to show my thanks is list your names in my videos, regardless of tier. Thank you again to all of you who genuinely support me. I'm really touched by it. Have a lovely evening, everyone. Until next time, adios.